So you've installed your brand new motor and you've been told that you need to put in an overload. I mean, it even says it in the standards, but what type do you need to install? How big does it need to be? G'day, you legend. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down an overload and showing you exactly how they work and what one you might wanna choose for your installation. Let's get into it. All right, so here we have an actual motor overload. So this thing here is actually what they call a solid state overload. Now a lot of people do get this mixed up sometimes and think that they've got like these thermal uh, bimetal strips inside them but nowadays you use like electronic or solid state devices and the main reason for that is because you can get a lot more range. When you're using sort of bimetal strips you're actually limited to the mechanical and thermal properties of those leaves. I'm just gonna go straight to the side here. And the first thing you can see is actually the model number here, which is actually a discontinued model, which is how I was able to get this one. Uh, and then the EE, which I think denotes that it can be auto or manual, and I'll show you what that means um, a little bit later. And then the, the VF, which is just the model. A uh, couple other things to note here is obviously it gives you the current range, which you can see 60 to 120 amps which is quite a large range. Usually you wouldn't get a range like that, like I said, with just existing thermals type of overloads. And then we've got the trip classes of 10 and 30, and I'll, I'll show you what that means in a bit. This one here actually would go on the bottom of a contactor, very, very similar to something like this. And you would directly mount it sort of like that. I mean, this one isn't exactly the right model for it, or you could also put it a uh, bit further down uh, in your installation, maybe even over here, uh, clip it onto some DIN rail and then use some cables to run out. But honestly, most of the installations you'll see is they are directly mounted to each other. If you're interested, I did make a video about the breakdown of this particular contactor and exactly how they work and all the stuff inside of it. So I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so moving around sort of to the face here, you've obviously got uh, a couple of buttons here. We've got a test button, uh, which is this red one here. And that's obviously, that will, that will test the trip mechanism to see whether all of your auxiliary contacts are working. Something that a lot of people sometimes don't understand is this actually doesn't break any load. It's made to detect an overload at a certain range and then it will cut out your main contactor, usually that's how you, or you might have a shunt trip for your circuit breaker or something like that. So the power going to the coil of this contactor, it would get detected through the overload and break here. There's actually nothing to break inside of this overload. To do that, it would detect through these auxiliary contacts here. And these are selectable depending on your application. This one here has a normally, what do I zoom in, normally closed, contact and a normally open contact. Over here we have the reset, so if it does trip and you need to come up, you can manually select that. And then you've got the range from 60 to 120. Over here is a couple of uh, modes that you can set it in. At the moment, if you look at the little dip switches, you can see the preset is for A, which is automatic reset. So if it trips, it'll reset within a certain amount of time. And you will be able to detect that again if you've got a PLC or some sort of monitoring through these auxiliary contacts. And then we've got the trip class. So the two dip switches are set to the left, which would be a trip class of 10, which is pretty normal. Actually, I don't think anybody changes these. And what that is, is actually over and above six times the rated current, which you set it to, it will trip within less time of that set point, which is 10 seconds. You really don't want to extend these out too far unless you've got a really specific application. A lot of a, a bit of a misnomer within the industry is that you might set your motor uh, rated current to the full load of your motor. Now, it actually says here, uh, the trip rating is 120% of the full load amps of your installation or your motor. This really doesn't happen within industry because if you're running your motor at full load amps, it's probably not sized correctly. You wanna have a little bit more leeway and give within your installation for your motor. You don't wanna be running it full load all the time. So what often happens is that you do just set it to 100%. There's probably not much, not much else to these things, but I've never seen inside one of these. But I've got a hammer, 
and I've got a screwdriver and I'm just gonna go for it and smash it open. Let's just see exactly how these things are made. Ooh, somehow I don't think I'm gonna be able to reuse this. Whoa, okay. Hey mate, do you wanna come in and see? Stand up, see the camera? So this is Oakley, this is my son. He's come to have a look. You ready? What do you think is going to be inside? Cables? Cables? And wires. Well, wires, probably. Mm. Alright. A piece of swing dead over there. Yeah, lots of stuff has been flying out. So obviously that's the electronics for the front bit here. And this is where I would assume the detection is done inside of this uh, printed circuit board. Ooh, it's cracked. It's definitely cracked, man. I, I've gone pretty... Pretty crazy. You've, you've destroyed it. I've destroyed it. This is all in the name of science, bud. All right. Is there metal balls inside this thing? Metal balls? No, don't think there's metal balls. Sounds like it. Okay, Oakley's disappeared. So I've been able to uh, get it to a point where I can actually um, take it apart. And as you can see, like I said before, there's no point where you can break the load. It actually is just a solid copper bar where you can detect uh, the load through it. And the way that it does that, it uses something called a toroid, uh, where it's, it's just a coil, a laminated uh, sheets of iron that are put into a coil. And when the magnetic field from the load comes through, it produces a current that's detected through here. Uh, and then it is able to go up and into, see, I was able to cut those little bits off there. But those two there would be detected by the printed circuit board. Uh, and depending on what you set it to, it should trip within the adjusted trip class. Uh, so I don't think I'm getting that back together, but uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and you're probably gonna enjoy this one too.